Hey everyone, Daniel here and welcome back to another video. I hope all of you are having an absolutely phenomenal day out there. As always, here today we need to talk about Voyager Digital, but more specifically the massive move downwards we've been seeing in both the stock and the token over the past couple of days. And I hope to address this through a, a few main points. First and foremost, touching on exactly what's been happening with Voyager Digital stock, why it's been going down, and whether or not I'm worried. Next, we're going to take a look at the fair value of Voyager Digital at this moment in time and take a look at their current valuation based off of where their business fundamentals are at this moment in time. Next, we're going to touch on a bear article that was just released a couple days ago talking about different things with Voyager. I want to debunk some of those points. And lastly, we're going to touch on the VGX token, what I'm doing, what's happening and what my plan is moving forward. So if you end up finding some value in this video, please consider subscribing and let's get into it. So when we take a look at Voyager Digital here down 10% today to $16.40 cents. And this is on top of the downtrend that we've seen over the past week, roughly from over $20. It almost seemed like Voyager was, you know, coming back. It was roaring back. And then now it's uh, obviously gone downhill from there. Uh, and this can be frustrating for long-term investors and shareholders of Voyager Digital. You know, it's very, very easy to get caught up in the negativity cycle of people saying, you know, I was right. I was right. It's down 10% today. Uh, you're a fool. Why would you invest in Voyager? And I, again, I really hope to kind of communicate that when we talk about the current fair valuation of Voyager. But, you know, if something consider this an opportunity, an opportunity to continue accumulating shares of this absolutely phenomenal company that's growing significantly, that's valued at a ridiculous valuation compared to even value companies and has a very bright future ahead of itself. And, you know, when we talk about this move downward that we've seen, especially today, it's actually linked with the movement in Bitcoin. We saw a, a movement down in Bitcoin, rather a, a correct mini crash from around 37, 36,000 back on Monday, all the way down to almost $30,000 per coin at the beginning or rather the midday here today. And you know what we've seen over the past couple of days and past couple of weeks, or even past couple of months is the price of Voyager digital stock be essentially parallel with the price of Bitcoin. And I think this is something that is, you know, so apparent in not just Voyager, but Coinbase as well. Cryptocurrency brokerages or exchanges across the board track the price of Bitcoin. And this makes absolutely no sense because, you know, Voyager digital as a company, they make the most amount of money on the highest volatility days. So when Bitcoin is down 10%, that is a phenomenal day for them because they experience, you know, record net deposits, it's record trades, uh, more users signing up for the platform. So, you know, despite, you know, the price of Bitcoin moving downwards, Voyager Digital, as in the fundamentals of Voyager, actually managed to improve on a day like that. So when we see a move downwards based on simply Bitcoin moving down, it's just an opportunity to add and it's literally just FUD. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. This doesn't make me worried whatsoever. And if something, it makes me even more bullish because it gives us a bit of an accumulation phase. And this is the next thing I want to talk about. You know, when we look at Bitcoin here, I made this video just a couple of weeks ago, May 20th, uh, comparing Bitcoin in 2017 to Bitcoin in 2020 and 2021. And we'll see, we've seen a major correlation since the beginning of this bull run. But what's very interesting is this correction, this crash whatever you might call it, that we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks has been essentially mirrored from what we saw back in 2017. And, you know, although this chart is from a couple of weeks ago, Bitcoin's pretty much hasn't moved since then. And it's very interesting to see this parallel. Obviously, if we do end up following what we saw back in 2017, we should see a bounce back within the coming weeks, within the coming months, and, you know, continue roaring higher. And obviously, if that does happen, phenomenal for Voyager stock. And it will probably do very, very well because, you know, by the looks of it, the market isn't willing to price in, you know, the phenomenal things going on at Voyager. They just want to look at, you know, Bitcoin as a whole. And, you know, when we talk about potential fears and potential risks for Voyager, the main one is pretty much a bear market occurring in cryptocurrencies that would obviously cause a period of downturn when it comes to revenues at the company, potentially for a year, a year and a half, but, you know, at these levels, I don't think, you know, the possibility of a bear market, even if it does occur, it's not going to be nearly as bad as it was back in 2017, because we're not at, you know, frothy valuations compared or rather, you know, a, a frothy levels like we were back in 2017. If we want to go parallel to what we saw in 2017, we need to get Bitcoin at 500,000. In my opinion, the possibility of a real crypto winter and a real crypto bear market starts to emerge if cryptocurrencies move into the 100,000 plus range, potentially 
usually the upper hundred thousand dollar plus range per coin. Obviously, that is when uh, you know we approach those bubblish territories when it comes to cryptocurrencies. At this point, I don't think it's too worrisome, and I think if we do end up seeing a bear market at this moment, it will not be nearly as bad as what we saw from 2017. So this is what happened with Voyager Digital Stock, and the bottom line is that this is a time to accumulate if you want to. Again, I'm not a financial advisor; I can't tell you to buy or sell a stock, but if you believe in Voyager, if you like the company, this is a phenomenal opportunity to add. And if uh, you know, kind of this trend between Bitcoin and Voyager uh, do stay the same, we should see a pretty nice bounce back tomorrow as cryptocurrencies have bounced back pretty well off of their lows over the past couple of hours here. We'll see what happens moving forwards. But tomorrow, assuming that cryptocurrencies, you know, stay flat or move upwards, we should see a rebound in Voyager digital stock. So uh, that's what happened today. One of the best things that we can do as investors in the stock market, whether it be Voyager digital stock or any other stock out there is take a look at fundamentals that allows us to gain conviction, improve our conviction and really keep out emotion when it comes to investing. You know, the topic of emotion is so, so important and I can't stress this enough. Your goal as an investor should be to get to a point eventually where if you see a stock drop 10%, you don't think, oh, it fell so much. What if it keeps falling? It should be okay. I believe in this company. I own this company and I think this company is undervalued. So if it dropped 10% based on no fundamental change, why should I sell? There is no reason for me to sell something. This is a reason to buy. And although our emotions may tell us otherwise, it's important to keep your cool, keep your calm. I'm not selling. Nothing's happened with Voyager. Don't let the Reddit, the stock twits, the Yahoo Finance forums, uh, you know, uh, get ahead of you and get into your decisions, your, you know, your investment decisions. Look at it from a purely fundamental perspective. And that's what I want to do right now. So what I want to do is take a look at Voyager Digital and where their valuation stands at this moment in time. Using April numbers and today's prices, where is Voyager Digital's valuation? Well, let's figure this out right now. First and foremost, let's get a sense of where Voyager is valued at currently on a market cap basis using a share price of $16.45, which is where they last closed. Multiply that by 172 million shares fully diluted, and you get a fully diluted market cap of $2.8 billion. That's actually under three billion for the first time in a couple of weeks here, but uh, that's the current valuation of Voyager Digital. So now let's try and come up with a potential price to earnings ratio. And what we're going to do is use $60.85 million in monthly revenue. Now, if you've watched my channel over the past couple of weeks and past couple of months, we've gone out and kind of filled in the blanks to get a sense of where Voyager could be at revenue wise for April. And in my personal opinion, I think $60.85 million is very, very possible. If you've watched my channel at all over the past couple of weeks or past couple of months, you know that we went ahead and calculated this number for the month of April based on the data that Voyager has given us. And in my personal opinion, it's almost certain that this number is going to come to fruition. Keep in mind, even if you do think this is optimistic, consider the fact that we are using April numbers in this situation. So even if this does end up being a little bit optimistic, consider the fact that Voyager did grow in the month of May, despite cryptocurrencies falling, we saw an increase in users. We saw an increase in, uh, you know, principal value traded leading to most likely higher revenues. So sure, $60.85 million. That's what I think they did in the month of April. That's probably coming up short to what they did in the month of May. But again, I want to use the data that's given to us. I don't want to really guess anything here. I just just want to use numbers that are certainties. So next, that gives us a yearly revenue run rate of around $730 million. And using a 55% operating income margin, we get around $400 million in EBITDA. That's earnings before interest, taxes, depreciations, and amortizations. Consider the fact that in the most recent earnings report, where they reported $60 million in revenue for Q1, which is January, February, and March, they had a 50% operating income margin. Voyager Digital's business is very uh, kind of stagnated when it comes to costs. Their costs don't increase as much as their revenue does. So as revenue increases, their operating income margin will increase alongside that. And this is something that Voyager Digital CEO has stated. In my opinion, at this revenue run rate, a 60% uh, kind of operating income margin could very well happen. But again, I don't want to be too optimistic in this situation. I'm going to assume kind of like the middle scenario of 55% operating income margins, which again is most likely conservative. 
using $4 million in interest expenses, which is kind of uh, mirroring what happened in their most recent earnings report, and taxes of 24% to 24% tax rate, which is uh, pretty close to Coinbase's, I think even a little bit above Coinbase's, we get a net income margin of 41.3%, or $300 million in net income on the bottom line. Divide the market cap by the net income, and you get a P.E. ratio of 9.4. This company is trading ridiculously cheap, and if you compare it to any value company out there, even value value companies, it's trading ridiculously cheap. Voyager, on top of being valued significantly lower than even value companies, is growing significantly. They're growing their revenues significantly year in and year out. And if you look at this chart here, you'll see that from January to February to March to April, we have seen massive revenue growth. And if we assume revenue continues to grow in the coming months, we're going to get a situation where this valuation may not be able to stay this low. So when we look at this uh, decline that we've seen in share price at Voyager Digital, we've got a situation where, you know, it's going down, but business fundamentals continue to improve. And even using April numbers, Voyager Digital is trading at a ridiculously cheap valuation. This is an example of some of the things you might need to do to gain conviction in a stock. If you own Voyager Digital shares, this should give you confidence that at a 9.4 price to earnings ratio, Voyager digital stock probably won't go much lower. Obviously, I can't tell you if it's going to go up or if it's going to go down because it could go either way. If the market falls, Voyager is probably going to fall alongside it. But I can tell you that Voyager at their current valuation doesn't need to grow to do well. But alongside that, Voyager continues to grow their customer base, continues to expand their platform, and continues to make more revenue month over month over month. I want to take you all through is this article here on Voyager Digital, and it looks at it from a more bearish point of view. I'm going to link this in the description down below as it is very, very long and would make this video 30, 40 minutes. Uh, so instead of reading this, right before I started recording, I came across a very, very interesting thread on Twitter that really highlights a lot of my opinions and debunks a lot of the points made on this article. So what I want to do, uh, this is actually written by one of the former founders of Voyager Digital, Shingo Levine. And I just want to give you guys my overall thoughts on, you know, kind of the points made and what these rebuttals are. So the first point here is that Voyager has to spend money on growth, which eats into profitability. And, you know, Shingo here says that uh, the company needs to spend money on growth, which is, uh, you know, pretty evident in, you know, any business. Uh, but as mentioned by management, that money spent on growth is earned back extremely quickly. Average acquisition cost is $40 per account. And average revenue per account is $100 per month. Obviously, that's not profit. That's revenue. But even assuming a 30, potentially 40% profit margin, which, you know, is very, very likely at these at these levels here when we look at revenues you know average acquisition cost is pretty much covered within around a month potentially a month and a half very very good for the business here at voyager and also the company is profitable the company's metrics are insane 50 percent operating income margins 660x increase in assets under management i'm assuming year over year and these numbers are not a fluke they don't include April and May, where growth only accelerated. Obviously, we just looked at April numbers, which will be absolutely phenomenal. You know, this next quarter here is really going to showcase a lot of the potential at Voyager. And Bitcoin bull run may have helped, but Voyager is a solid business. No doubt in my mind. Point two, management bought a lot of stock while it was low and sold in 2021 when it was high. I'm not sure how this is a criticism. Management's job is to increase the share price. Management had confidence in the business when the company was undervalued and was rewarded for delivering. Point number three, social media is skewed towards positivity with naysayers being shouted down. Voyager has an active, engaged, and passionate community. This is an asset, not a liability. Correcting people when they post inaccurate info or fear, uncertainty, and doubt is good, not bad. Valid criticism is welcome. And he actually mentioned the, that, you know, the Reddit forum is really based off of a lot of hype and is almost like an echo chamber of hype. And I think it really is important to understand that that doesn't have any material impact on the company and, you know, should not be considered when talking about the stock. You know, if someone's talking positively about Voyager, good for them. But that is not a reason to sell. And that should not be a, a potential red flag when looking at Voyager in any way. Uh, until 2021, cash flow was negative and financed by equity, Voyager hit a massive growth spike at the end of 2020 through 2021, which reflected in the share price. Negative cash flow is typical for tech businesses investing in growth. Equity financing made the most sense. 
That is completely true. Back in 2020, Voyager's business didn't really exist. And because of that, they needed to raise money to continue uh, running their business, right? And they did that through equity financing. But moving forwards, they don't need to dilute any more stock because their business generates positive net income and positive cash flow to a point where they're now actually buying back stock up to roughly 5% in the next year here. And Voyager doesn't need any more financing by equity. So let's move forwards here. Point five, costs are increasing as revenues increase. Yes, but Voyager has scale. It is not a linear. Every $1 in revenue needs another 50 cents spent. Increasing costs are to fuel growth, and Voyager is already hitting the point where incremental costs are incurred for outsized growth, and this is something that we touch on on the channel a lot. As revenue increases at Voyager, profitability will increase alongside that as a lot of their costs are fixed. So moving forwards, as the company continues to improve, 55, 60% operating income margins are very, very well in the realm of possibility. And we're going to get a good sense of this in their next earnings report, which factors in revenue for the months of April, May, and June. Point six, insiders got a bunch of options at low valuations. Options are issued at fair market value and insiders were working on the company when it wasn't as valuable as it is today. The insiders made the company what it is today and the low priced options incentivized delivery. Again, there's nothing wrong about paying people with options as again, it incentivizes people to do well and to continue growing the business. Point seven, people can't talk about bearish information because of price manipulation rules on subreddit. I can assure this analyst that there are plenty of places for people to air their reservations about Voyager. People can say whatever they like, just as others can criticize it. No doubt in my mind, and you know, even just talking about the subreddit, I don't think it really should be associated with Voyager Digital Stock. If people want to talk about the stock, that's their own thing. Nothing too big here to talk about. Now, point eight, and this is the second last one here, there is risk in lending Bitcoin and other assets. Yes, that's granted, but that is where the management steps in to manage risk through intelligent counterparty selection. The risk exists in other crypto businesses offering interest programs as well and in the market as a whole. But we do need to consider that Voyager only picks reputable businesses with strong balance sheets and most of which are publicly traded like Galaxy Digital to lend out their cryptocurrencies too. And that's very, very important to note that Voyager only picks businesses that have strong balance sheets and have very, very minimal risks of potential bankruptcy. And that's what we got here with them picking businesses like Galaxy Digital, only bigger companies with stronger balance sheets. That's what Voyager lends to. And I think the risk uh, obviously is there. But even in the most recent cryptocurrency pullback that we've seen, we've seen no defaults on their loans as of yet. And moving forwards, I think that staking will allow them to diversify into other assets aspects of generating in interest for their customers. And lastly, the conclusion, shaky fundamentals, insider selling, and no acquisitions equals to liquidate your positions. That's essentially what he said. I don't think the fundamentals are shaky and insiders still own a lot of the company. Voyager has also announced intention to buy back stock. So it isn't true that there are no acquisitions. So I personally think that this thread here on Twitter really summarized a lot of the things very, very well, uh, really addressed a lot of my opinions and a lot of the things that this gentleman here, Andreas Repetta, actually said. And I, I think this article here really is emphasizing, you know, uh, too much on insider selling and a lot of things that don't have a material impact on the business. Fundamentals at Voyager continue to improve. We see that with revenues, with profits, with verified accounts. And moving forwards, I think this article really is just something that uh, is obviously promoting fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And in my mind, isn't really focusing in on a lot of the facts at Voyager and is missing the bigger picture when it comes to their current revenue and current profitability. So the next and last thing that I want to touch on here is the price of VGX. Obviously, it's been very volatile over the past couple of weeks and past couple of months. You know, on June 2nd, we got the great announcement on the LGO token swap taking place at the end of June and the Voyager loyalty program, hopefully uh, uh, getting released at the end of the summer at the latest. But when we look at this whole situation with VGX, I think it's great that you get these opportunities to continue adding more VGX. And, you know, uh, with time, I see no reason to worry about this. 
this, the use case for VGX starts when the loyalty program does get launched. And the first step of that is the token swap, which hopefully takes place at the end of the month. I'm continuing to accumulate on a regular basis and will continue to accumulate as long as Voyager uh, kind of stays at these significantly undervalued levels. And long term, we'll see what ends up happening. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found any value in it whatsoever, please consider subscribing and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.